Is the US economy teetering on the edge of a downturn? Now I know what you're thinking. Give me a break. I just want to enjoy my McNuggets in peace. But buckle up, because even Ronald McDonald himself can't clown around the economic indicators flashing like a broken ice cream machine. Recently, McDonald's, the Golden Arches themselves, announced an earnings miss. And while that might seem like just another headline, it could be a greasy, salty harbinger of things to come for the American economy. So grab your oversized sodas and let's unpack why a blip in Big Macs might just give us indigestion for months to come. Now, I know what you're thinking. John, you endearingly grumpy bastard. How can you possibly draw a line from my insatiable craving for a quarter pounder with cheese to the potential collapse of the American economy? And look, you're right. It does feel a bit dramatic, but hear me out. McDonald's, much like that friend who claims they only need to use your bathroom, is often seen as a bellwether for the economy. When McDonald's does well, it generally means people have a little extra cash to throw around on things they don't necessarily need. Like, for example, a McFlurry that's basically just a cup of regret topped with sprinkles. But when even the allure of a McRib, a sandwich that appears with the same frequency and predictability as Halley's Comet, can't entice consumers, it might be a sign that people are tightening their belts. And by tightening their belts, I don't mean they've switched to a smaller size at Cinnabon. It means they're cutting back on discretionary spending, which can have a ripple effect throughout the entire economy. This earnings miss suggests that maybe, just maybe, the economic waters are starting to get a little choppy. And let's be clear, this isn't just about McDonald's. This is about the broader implications for consumer spending and what it means for the economy as a whole. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not saying that every time someone opts for a homemade PB&J instead of a Big Mac, the economy is on the brink of collapse. But what I am saying is that changes in consumer behavior, particularly when it comes to spending on discretionary items like fast food, can be a valuable indicator of the overall economic climate. Let's face it, we live in a world where even the most basic necessities seem to be getting more expensive by the day. Gas prices are enough to make you want to trade in your car for a horse and buggy. And don't even get me started on the price of eggs. In this economic climate, it's only natural that people are starting to be more mindful of their spending. And for many, that means cutting back on those little luxuries, like eating out. But what's particularly interesting about this McDonald's news is that it's not just lower income consumers who are feeling the pinch. Even those with higher incomes are starting to tighten their purse strings, opting for cheaper alternatives or simply staying home more often. Now you might be thinking, John, you glorious dispenser of economic doom and gloom. Surely there are other factors at play here besides people's sudden aversion to chicken McNuggets. And you'd be right. The global economy is a complex and interconnected web. And there are a multitude of factors that can influence consumer spending. For starters, let's talk about the elephant in the room, or rather the war waging across the globe. Conflict disrupts supply chains, drives up prices and creates a general sense of uncertainty. Add to that the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which, despite what some politicians might have you believe, is not exactly over. Now, I know what you're thinking. John, you delightful purveyor of economic anxiety, are you telling me that even the one percenters are ditching their truffle-infused Wagyu beef burgers in favor of a good old-fashioned McDouble? And the answer is, well, sort of. Look, even the wealthiest among us aren't immune to the economic realities of the world we live in. Sure, they might not be clipping coupons or waiting in line for a free coffee on National Coffee Day, but they are paying attention to the same economic indicators as the rest of us. And when they see those indicators flashing red, they're going to adjust their spending accordingly. Think of it like this. Even if you're sailing on a yacht made of solid gold, you're still going to notice if the tide starts to turn. And right now, the economic tide seems to be turning towards a period of uncertainty. But hold on a minute. Let's not forget that amidst all this talk of economic doom and gloom, 
there's a certain scrappiness to the human spirit. When faced with adversity, we humans are remarkably adaptable creatures. We find ways to stretch our budgets, make do with less, and find joy in the simple things. Remember the Great Depression? Okay, maybe not personally, unless you're a particularly spry centenarian, but you've seen the documentaries. People were dancing the Charleston while the stock market crashed around them. Okay, that might be a slight exaggeration, but the point is, even in the darkest of times, people find a way. And in the case of this potential economic downturn, that way might just be paved with homemade burgers and oven-baked fries. Yes, my friends, the humble home-cooked meal might just be the saving grace of the American economy. Now, I know what you're thinking, John. You magnificent bastard of economic insight. What in the blue hell does a biscuit have to do with the American economy? And you'd be right to ask, because on the surface it does seem like a bit of a non-sequitur. But bear with me, because this is where things get really interesting. You see, economists have this thing called leading indicators, which are basically economic variables that tend to change before the economy as a whole does. Think of them like the canaries in the coal mine of the financial world. When they start dropping, it's a sign that something might be amiss. Now, traditionally, these leading indicators have been things like building permits, manufacturing orders, and consumer confidence surveys. But recently, some economists have started to look at more unconventional indicators, things like lipstick sales. Apparently, when times are tough, people buy more lipstick. Go figure. And, you guessed it, biscuit sales. Now, let's talk about what happens when the economic seas get really rough. And I'm not talking about a little choppy waters might spill my shamrock shake rough. I'm talking about full-on Poseidon is pissed Kraken attack rough. This is when companies start to get desperate and things can get ugly. Picture this. The economy is tanking, people are cutting back on spending, and suddenly every fast food chain in America is locked in an epic battle for your hard-earned dollars. It's a price war, my friends, and the casualties are going to be delicious. Suddenly, the dollar menu is back with a vengeance, and every other commercial is a symphony of two-for-one deals and limited time offers. But here's the thing about price wars. They're rarely good for anyone in the long run. Now, you might be thinking, John, you delightful harbinger of economic uncertainty. Surely you're not suggesting that the fate of the entire American economy rests on the shoulders of the humble fast food industry. And to that, I say, hold my McCafe iced coffee because things are about to get real. You see, the fast food industry, for all its greasy glory, is actually a pretty good barometer for the overall health of the economy. Think about it. When times are good and people are feeling flush, they're more likely to indulge in the occasional fast food meal. It's a treat, a convenience, a way to save time and energy in our increasingly hectic lives. But when the economy starts to sour and people start tightening their belts, guess what's one of the first things to go? That's right, my friends, the Big Macs and the Chicken McNuggets, the French fries and the milkshakes. Now, I know what you're thinking. John, you wonderfully cynical observer of all things economic, are you seriously trying to tell me that the key to understanding the complexities of the American economy lies in the greasy palm of a drive through worker handing me a paper bag full of questionable culinary delights? And to that I say, hold my extra-large Diet Coke, because things are about to get statistically significant up in here. Look, I'm not saying that the fast food industry is some kind of economic oracle, dispensing wisdom alongside greasy burgers and lukewarm fries. But what I am saying is that changes in fast food spending, particularly when combined with other economic indicators, can provide valuable insights into the overall health of the economy. Think of it like this. Fast food sales are like the economic equivalent of taking your temperature. Now let's talk about the real driving force behind the American economy the American consumer. We are a nation of shoppers, a country built on consumption. We buy things we need, things we don't need, and things we didn't even know we needed until we saw them advertised on late night television. But the American consumer is facing a multitude of challenges these days. 
From rising inflation and stagnant wages to a housing market that seems determined to price out anyone who isn't already a multimillionaire, it's enough to make you want to throw in the towel, move to a yurt in the woods and live off the land. Now I know what you're thinking, John, you delightfully morbid economic enthusiast. Are you suggesting that the American economy is a crumbling edifice held together by duct tape and wishful thinking? And to that I say, hold my beer because I'm about to launch into a metaphor that's as structurally unsound as the American housing market. Look, every economy has its cracks, its imperfections, its areas that could use a little TLC. But the question is, are these just minor cosmetic issues or are they signs of something more serious lurking beneath the surface? Now, I know what you're thinking. John, you glorious dispenser of economic prognostication, what does the future hold for the American economy? Should we be stocking up on canned goods and ammunition or investing in Bitcoin and beachfront property? And to that, I say, if I could accurately predict the future, I wouldn't be hosting a show on YouTube. I'd be lounging on a private island, sipping Mai Tais out of a solid gold coconut. The truth is, predicting the future is a fool's errand, especially when it comes to the economy. There are simply too many variables, too many unknowns, too many black swan events waiting to throw a wrench in the works. But that doesn't mean we can't make educated guesses based on current trends and historical patterns. Now I know what you're thinking. John, you magnificently cynical purveyor of economic commentary, haven't we heard all this doom and gloom before? The economy ebbs and flows, the stock market goes up and down, and yet here we are, still standing, still consuming, still scrolling through TikTok videos of dancing cats while the world burns around us. And you know what? You're not wrong. We humans are remarkably adaptable creatures. We've weathered economic storms before, and we'll weather them again. So there you have it, folks. The American economy, in all its messy, unpredictable glory. We've explored the good, the bad, and the downright McRib-tastic. We've seen how changes in consumer behavior, from declining fast food sales to the rise of the home-cooked meal, can provide valuable insights into the overall health of the economy. We've delved into the factors that are putting pressure on the American consumer, from rising inflation and stagnant wages to a global pandemic and a war that seems determined to rewrite the rules of the global order. From the alarming dip in McDonald's earnings to the potential implications for the average American, we've journeyed through a world where economic uncertainty looms larger than the mascot on top of the restaurant. While we haven't found a crystal ball hidden inside a Happy Meal yet, one thing is clear. Ignoring the signs of economic change is about as effective as using a napkin as an umbrella in a monsoon. So, what have we learned from this deep dive into the land of burgers and fries? Maybe, just maybe, the answer to understanding the complex economic forces shaping our world lies not in a textbook, but in the bottom of a greasy paper bag. What will be your next move in these uncertain economic times?